Okay, thank you. So I'm Enol Fernandez working for EGI.eu as Cloud Technologies, and I will continue with this webinar on the cloud part of the data services and solutions of EGI. So this is the outline of what I want to show today. First, uh, a brief introduction of uh, what is available uh, for data in the cloud and what is the EGI Federated Cloud. Then some use cases and technical details about those ways of accessing data in the cloud, block storage, object storage, and, and native cloud solutions. Then I will uh, review the state of the art, what it is the status in EGI. I will give two brief examples of usage of these data features in, in, in currently in FedCloud, and, and I will end with the future plans. So yesterday, um, Diego did uh, a webinar also on the Federated Cloud, but just to give you some context, the Federated Cloud is the Federation of Institutional Private Clouds that offers uh, infrastructure as a service to, to, to researchers in, in Europe. This cloud is based on open standards, so we use uh, a set of standards that are open and, and, and freely available to, to implement for, by anyone. And we have an heterogeneous implementation, so we don't have a mandate on the technology that is used at each cloud provider. Instead, what we enforce is the uh, standards and interfaces that they need to provide in order to become part of the federated cloud. In the bottom of the slide, you can see several logos of the uh, use cases already used in the Fed Cloud. We have uh, cases from the biological research like LifeWatch, Elixir, Earth Science like Virtue, or higher energy physics like Atlas. So we have a wide diversity of use cases already using uh, this uh, platform, the Federated Cloud. In this slide, I want to show in, in very brief summary, the main capabilities of the infrastructure as a service. On the one hand, we have the computing part where we would have the VM management, that's virtual machine management, and the virtual machine marketplace where you can uh, browse and, and, and select what kind of virtual machines to run. And then on the other hand, we have the storage, what I will talk today. So we have block storage and object storage. So I will go in detail in, into them. Block storage is a, a persistent block level storage to use with a virtual machine. Uh, there is a good analogy. You can think of a USB stick that you can create and plug into a virtual machine. So that would be a block storage. Key features of this is uh, first is quite simple to use. Once you attach to a virtual machine, it's like having another disk there. So you don't have to worry about protocols or, or, or fancy ways of accessing the data, just this is another disk, so you can use it directly. It's also a snapshot table, so you can do backups and, and, and come back to, to where you were before if you need it. It's high performance, it's usually uh, um, connected to dedicated networks and, and, and has consistent and low latency performance in your virtual machine. And in some sites, you also have a solid state disk, so you have very high uh, throughput from those kind of storage. And you can scale to your needs. So you can create a, a small disk of one gigabyte to one terabyte without any issues. And you can create as many as you want and attach uh, as many disks as you want to, to uh, any given VM as you uh, demand it. In the case of the object storage, it's a totally different philosophy. So this is a storage infrastructure where you can store and retrieve your data from anywhere at any time. Uh, key features, first is accessed by an API. So it's not like the previous case where you just go to the disk. In this case, you, you have to use a, uh, an API. Normally it's a simple REST API, so it's, it's quite easy to write clients for that. It's a scalable, so you can store as much data as you need, and you get accounting 
all only for the space you use. If you store one byte, that's what you get accounted for. And in this case, you are also have facilities for sharing. You can define define a access control list on each object and share publicly your data. In this table, I show main differences between them. So in the case of the access, in block storage, you can only access to one volume only from a, a VM and only within the same site the VM is located. So this is quite local. In the case of, in the case of object storage, you can access from any device connected to the internet. Block storage cannot be shared. So you connect it to one VM, and that's the only VM that can access it directly. Object storage can be shared without problems. You can define if your data is private or public. In the case of accounting, in the block storage, you get accounted for the entire volume. So if you allocate a, a volume of, of one terabyte, you will get accounted for one terabyte, regardless of having their store just one byte or the whole terabyte. In the case of the object storage, you only get accounted for the data that you store. And last, for the integration, block storage is quite easy. Once you attach your disk, it's just written and reading like any other local disk. In the case of object storage, you have to do more development because you require a client to integrate with your application. Some sample use cases in the case of block storage uh, is basically for, for hosting uh, data that needs to be persistent. So application hosting or databases. You can also use as a, as a big space for storing your data and process data there. Uh, take into account that most of the virtual machines that you start in the, in the Fed Cloud have a rather small disk, so in, a, in the order of tens of gigabytes. So if you need more space, you probably will go to, to this kind of block storage in any case. And object storage is different philosophy. So it's a more like uh, use it for file storage or backup. You can use it even as a static uh, uh, context server. So you can have a, a web server implemented in, in object storage. You can use it for, for media serving and sharing between a community and also for big data that does not fit normally in, in a single disk. The typical setup of a block storage would be to create one or several of these volumes, store your data there. Your data will proceed your, uh, independently of, of the VM. So for if for any reason your VM dies, the data will still be there. You can do striping for better performance. So you can set up a, a rate zero of several volumes and have better performance of, of your disk access if you need that kind of uh, performance. And the usual way of sharing the information there is using something like NFS. So you export via NFS your data to another virtual machine, or you can use it as a database store. So you can put in your virtual machine your MySQL or, or Postgres and, and store the data in your volumes, and the virtual machine will, will serve those data to, to other uh, pieces of your software than needed. Block storage in the Fed Cloud is managed via OCCI. OCCI is a, a, an OGF standard API. It stands for Open Cloud Computer Interface. This API is, is de this designed to be interoperable uh, between several cloud technologies. And in our case, the work, typical workflow will be to use the OCCI commands to create and delete the volumes, then to attach or detach those volumes to the virtual machines in the OCCI terms that would be link and unlink. And once it is attached, you can use a solo disk in the VM. So all of that, you can do it with the simple command line in OCCI. 
In the case of object storage, we use CDMI. CDMI stands for Cloud Data Management Interface. It's also a standard developed by SNIA, and now it has become also ISO standard. It is a RESTful API uh, for operations on storage objects. And the, and the good thing of, of this API is that it's very, very flexible. So it's based on capabilities. You can, depending on, on your implementation, you can have one or more of those capabilities. And, and, and it goes from the very basic ones, like creating, getting, deleting, listing your objects, to having ACS, to uh, have the possibility of importing data from external sources or exporting those data as file system, etc. In principle, uh, you can extend the API as much as you want. We also have native cloud solutions. So uh, in the Fed Cloud, we do not mandate the technology, we mandate the APIs. So each technology provides its own native uh, API. Normally, these are more feature-rich than, than the OCC ICDMI. However, these are not yet fully integrated in EGI's Fed Cloud. This is something that uh, will happen in the future. In the table below, I have put just the names of the native APIs and the different cloud management frameworks that we are now supporting in, in the Fed Cloud. So for OpenStack, we have Cinder for Block and Swift for Optic Storage. Open Nebula has a, its own Open Nebula API for block storage. It doesn't support object storage. And Cinefo, which is a, a, a year not implementation of a cloud management framework, supports the same APIs at OpenStack and also a, a native one called Pitos. The state of the art for block storage, right now it is supported on all the Fed Cloud cloud management frameworks inside. Here I have a table also with the, what you can do with block storage. So the basic operations that would be creating, deleting, attaching, detaching the volumes to the virtual machine would be supported everywhere. Then for advanced features like resizing and snapshotting, it's not available right now in OCCI, but it is in the native uh, APIs. Although for Open Nebula, resizing is not possible. So for most of the use cases, OCCI should be enough for you. And if you need further uh, functionality, then we could talk about native APIs. In the case of object storage, uh, CDMI support is not as uh, as available as the OCCI support. Right now, we have a, a CDMI server framework developed by Cinefo. We are porting that framework also for OpenStack, so I hope soon we'll have a, a support in OpenStack. And we have a basic client available. What is available also is the native APIs that allow both the basic uh, operations like getting, listing, and deleting files also allow advanced capabilities. Here in the table, we have the, the current state of the art. So uh, basic CDMI operations are available in, in Cinefo and OneData. Open Nebula does not have that functionality, so it's not available. OpenStack is in progress right now. And in the case of native MPI, you have support in OpenStack Cinefo and OneData. I will now show you two examples of, uh, of real setups of the Fed Cloud using the cloud storage. So the first one is Chipster. Chipster is a graphical application for data analysis with a server backend. This is mostly for bio, uh, bio biological analysis. So originally, uh, they had this Chipster virtual machine that was uh, uh, the operating system plus a big collection of, of tools and data. So it was around 200 gigabytes. So it was not practical to uh, move around this kind of big virtual machine images. And it took too long to start because every time you need to start this virtual machine, you needed to 
uh, copy 200 gigabytes to a node and, and, and then start the virtual machine. So what we did to deploy this solution at Defect Cloud, the first thing was to separate the operating system from the tools and data. And those tools and data were stored in two different volumes, one for tools and one from data. So uh, those volumes are attached to a virtual machine that is an NFS server. And every time the chipster needs a new virtual machine, it would start just the basic operating system and connect to the NFS server to get the tools and the data. So this way they reduce a lot the size of the virtual machine image. They can have several virtual machines started quite fast because the size is, is slow, so it doesn't take time to, to copy. And since they are using the NFS server, they can share the data within several of these virtual machines without any issues. So this would be a typical use case for the block storage. Now an example of, a, of object storage, I will talk about the IceCat 3D. IceCat 3D is a, a radar that is going to be located in the, in the north of Europe. Uh, in, in the past, we did uh, the implementation of the open source geospatial catalog portal, which is a web portal where users can go and, and, and access the, the data that is uh, stored by, by the IceCAT collaboration. And this data is stored as object storage in, in Fed Cloud. And now the idea is to uh, provide extra services by processing this data and put it in again into into the object storage. So this is the let's say the, the whole scheme of the of this use case. We have the IceCAT archive archive where we where the data of the radar is stored. Uh, periodically the data is uploaded to object storage using WGET. This W uh, this object storage uh, can be accessed with CDMI. So whenever a user goes to the open source geospatial catalog, uh, it will browse the catalog, which is fed with the object storage uh, uh, available with, uh, with CDMI. And the idea is to go for a phase two, now in EGI Engage, where we develop a set of pre-processing services that would take data from this object storage uh, and create new data and metadata and store it back again into the catalog. So in this case, we are using object storage to manage the data of the experiment. So now coming to the plans, uh, now we are starting a GA engage. So we have their uh, effort to, to further develop OCC and CDMI interfaces in Fed Cloud. So the idea is that this will become as feature rich as the native APIs. Then in EGI Engage, there is also development of one data, which is a tool I will, I will mention now in the coming slide. There is also one storage testbed that will be created, and I will also talk about it later on. And there are also several related projects, mainly Indigo, that will develop uh, cloud solutions focused on data. So they will uh, bring new solutions and services that will help users to, to manage their data. As I said before, one of the things that will be uh, in AGI Engage is one data. One data is a new service. It is meant to be a distributed multi-provider storage. So uh, data is located in several locations, but as a user, you only see one interface. You can define flexible access control, so you can set data public, private, uh, define, define fine-grained ACLs in, in each object. Uh, it can share data, between federations of one data providers. It works with uh, tokens and, and certificates, so it's flexible in the, 
in the authentication part, it also allows not just accessing as object storage, but also as a, a POSIX file system. So you can mount this uh, data on your um, virtual machine or, or or cluster, whatever you are using for accessing your data. It scales from a single NAS to a large data center and then can be deployed uh, on top of a high performance parallel storage solution with a small overhead. And it's uh, supporting the open data scenarios and preparation I will talk now. And it's supported by the Polish Grid Initiative, EGI Engage, also Indigo and Espresso. So about this storage testbed, the idea is to create a, a new testbed that will allow to, to test tools and, and setups in a distributed and, and big enough collection of resources so we can get to a big scale and, and see if there are problems of escapability of, or, or usability of the, of the solutions provo uh, provided. The idea is to test here one data, iRoads, CDMI, or, or anything that you as users may require, and pilot applications to be migrated to production. Currently, we are in the phase of looking for resource provider to join this testbed, and as users, you can join to articulate requirements and preferences for this infrastructure. So if you have clear requirements of on storage, you should join here and say, this is what I need. Last, I have a set of references that you can check if you want more information on the federated cloud and storage and the standards that we are supporting right now in the federated cloud. So 